It reached every corner of the world and changed us all. I have to keep it together. I have kids who can't see me fall apart. He has to come home. The first wave of the pandemic here in the U.S. bringing healthcare workers to their knees and patients to the brink. It is because of you that we are going to make it through. You are more than just a doctor. The first wave was like definitely a tale of two cities. It was like a silence in New York. But like in hospitals, it was like chaos. Now as the Omicron variant arrives in the U.S., we're nearly two years since the start of the COVID-19 crisis. And those on the front lines are the worst of it, now reflecting on the moments that changed them. When we started chanting, I literally felt like my breath was stripped away. I also heard all the times my patients said, I can't breathe. Their journeys are featured in an intimate new Nat Geo participant film, The First Wave, taking us inside one of the hardest hit hospital systems. Guys, we need some help in here now. Documenting the first four months of the pandemic, the heroes at the center of it all. What we've been doing here over the last number of weeks is extraordinary and special. From your perspective, what's this film about? I think the film's about many things. I originally went in to, to make this film to try to humanize and put a human face to, to COVID. Last week, they were like maybe one, two. The film follows Dr. Natalie Duje, an internist working at Long Island Jewish in Queens, New York, the early epicenter of the pandemic. Is this a COVID patient? Is this not a COVID patient? At the time, little was known about the virus. We are taught pattern recognition. And as of right now, there's no clear pattern. What we were seeing inside there, it was hard to describe. And then no one else was seeing what we were seeing. In many ways, in the early days of COVID, it's like you were building a plane and flying at the same time. That's a great way to say that. There was a point where we had to increase capacity like 100%. So rooms that were single rooms were now double rooms. Logistically, it definitely did feel like we were building while we were performing. And death seemed to stalk every floor. I can never forget. I was talking to a patient. He was doing much better. He's like, I feel okay. There's just something that's a little off. We checked his vitals. We checked, we checked everything. And I called the daughter, I'm like, everything looks good. Everything looks fine. And um, I think he'll, he's gonna be okay. And then I'll never forget. I get a call, I'm home now. And my PA says, he died. I felt like I just told this, I told her, her dad was gonna be fine. Like, don't worry about it, you'll talk to him in the morning. And he died. And I just felt like I'm a liar. I just felt. <sighs> Matthew Heineman, the Oscar nominated filmmaker behind Tiger and Cartel Land, the gut-wrenching moments that unfolded were intentional. We certainly see people survive, but we also see people die. Why make the choice to be so raw in a number of places in this film? Because that's the reality of what happened. Finding that balance in the edit room was extremely, extremely important. And I definitely didn't want to sugarcoat the reality of, of what, we, what we all went through. As pain and loss mounted, a second crisis emerged. Following the death of George Floyd, tensions over racial injustice boiling over. My name is Keisha Williamson, bro. Yeah, I have to stop telling us, bro. We have to communicate with our patients, bro. Please. Listen, let's I feel you. I feel you. I feel you. I'm willing to put hands on y'all, bro. Don't, it's not even. It's not. It's not. Listen, don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Peace. Listen. Listen. The filmmaking team capturing unexpected raw moments. Because I'm tired of seeing people like you in the hospital. I'm tired. I'm tired. It's not even worth it. Please. Your family cares about you. 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 In my perception, he wanted to be acknowledged as the gentleman that he is as that black man, that human being that's just trying to live his day to day. And for me, I just couldn't, my soul couldn't take 
any senseless harm to another black man. The film is unapologetic, making the connection of the I can't breathe from what it meant on the streets of America and George Floyd of the world to what it meant in the hospital. I can't breathe. When I first heard that line, I said, this can't be real. I was haunted by that phrase in the hospital. Those looks that the patients gave me of desperation, of anxiety. I saw what it looked like before someone passed away saying, I can't breathe. I felt my soul crushed. Don't beat yourself up. The majority of Dr. Duje's patients, black, brown, and immigrants. For me, I couldn't breathe. And then hearing, you know, I can't breathe. It's hard to, for me to swallow. Ahmed Ellis, a 36-year-old NYPD school safety officer and first-generation American, was brought to Dr. Duje's hospital after contracting COVID. During his 44-day stay, he was intubated twice. Oh, gosh. His wife, Alexis, allowing cameras to capture oh. each excruciating moment of their journey. I knew he was so sick. I thought maybe if the cameras were in there, that they would give him the best treatment. Yeah, I was just grasping at whatever to, to, to try to get the best care for my husband. Isolated in the hospital, the love from his wife and children giving him fuel to keep fighting. I say my darkest day just being there alone, not having anybody. I look forward to a FaceTime call every day and FaceTime with them because that's all I had. Hi, Daddy. Say hi, Daddy. Could you say hi? After a month and a half in the hospital, nice. Med finally regained enough strength to go home. Okay. You're fine. That was a great day. One of the happiest days of my life. His family cherishing every moment together. I'm still battling every day, still struggling, but tomorrow's not promised. We have two young ones that we have to show the right road. In the months following that first wave, much has changed for those featured in the film. I had to resign as a full-time physician because despite me loving what I do when I can do it fully and wholly um, and really get to work with my patients, mentally, the flashbacks are real. The PTSD is there. Dr. Duje is working part-time and recently returned from Montana, where she helped with their COVID surge. While the film makes clear the courage of healthcare workers, patients, and families, it also pays homage to an often unheralded superhero, the human spirit. I think there's no question that we've all been changed forever. And so, of course, there are difficult moments in this film. Um, but I also think there's just a lot of love and beauty and humanity. It is truly emphasizing the human spirit and what it can endure and how it can be better, and then to fight for that. So this film, it's life. You can watch the full Nat Geo documentary, The First Wave, streaming on Hulu, December 5th. Nat Geo is owned by our parent company, Disney. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.